so lovely to meet you, Jenny. <laughs> and it's very, very lovely to come and look at your beautiful exhibition here called Palace. Now, as a art lover, I don't paint and I don't do art on paper, but I'm always really interested in how you get to the process in lots of different elements of what you do. So with this exhibition, for example, when they told me to come and have a chat to you about it, my first thought was, when an art gallery comes and says, Jenny, we want you to put together an exhibition, where do you possibly start with that? Like what happens in your brain, in your heart, in your soul to mm. make you go, this is where I'm going to start? Oh, right. Well, Alice is so far out of my spectrum oh, right. <laughs> that uh, I thought it was a, a good challenge and I yeah. thought it was a challenge that I could meet uh, with Catherine. One, I like to work and I love these little sculptures and I thought, well, they're, they're about storytelling and I um, yeah. about storytelling. Not specifically with my work, but I can think along those lines. And, and I'm always challenged by a new idea. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I wouldn't just like, look, I'm only a painter, only a printer, I'm only, you know, doing in ceramics or jobbers. But all of those things have been part of my work yeah. over the years. Okay. And for different occasions, have required me to think carefully about the medium mm. that I want to best express it in. Yeah. So yeah, that's what happened here. And you you class yourself as contemporary artist. I now, do. for people in my generation and probably younger, they probably wouldn't really understand what that means specifically. And, yeah, it's a good question because contemporary is of our time. Yeah, I've never heard that. E everyone becomes a contemporary artist through their working life for the main component of what it is that they yep. are known for. Yeah. Um, and it would be wrong of me to say, look, I'm just a, I'm, or I'm not just, but I'm, I only work on paper. And there are many people who, that is their prerequisite yep. for being an artist, which is quite okay. But I think that contemporary means that your thinking processes are trying to evolve, to come up with answers, something that satisfies that creativity that's in yourself, yeah. um, how best to express it, and also how to use your own capabilities. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I wish no, that. It'd be no good me saying, well, I'm definitely going to do lithographs. I've never touched a lithographic stone. I wouldn't even yeah. know where to begin. But if you said, which Catherine did, she thought that I might do etchings, and I thought, oh, yes, I can do a series of etchings for this. I'm so pleased I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, and is that how you came up with this concept? You just kept going back and forward with her going, should we try yeah. this? Should we go that? Mm -hmm. Or did you wake up in the middle of the night one night and go, I've got it. <laughs> or it's not oh, that easy. Well, it is and it isn't. And it's, it's interesting. I was running a, a pure artist dilemma, running out of time. So what of my skills can I use to get this show up and running? Yeah, okay. Um, and for me to have, make a satisfactory, uh, you know, response yeah. to Alice in Wonderland, which I have to admit is a story that I never really loved as a child. Mm. Uh, I never finished it as a book. Mm. Neither did I actually. <laughs> yeah. We are not alone. Yeah. There are many people yeah. that say this, but I found it completely intriguing where it has come from and also which particular areas of art is it, it has influenced, like Salvador Dali. Mm, yeah. So he cottoned on to a couple of the aspects that were in Lewis Carroll's um, book and the whole, and, you know, so that, that challenged me and then I found, uh, I found a copy of the Salvador Dali illustrations of Lewis Carroll. Yeah. Uh, so that got me at least thinking. And then once you're thinking, you start to um, materialise yeah. what, what, you, you know, what you're going to use. So that's really interesting because really it started, like as you say, from a practical point of view of I'm running out of time. Mm. So you've kind of collaborated <laughs> a bit of practicality then obviously with your creative process, which mm. I think is really cool. Like that's really relatable. I think for a lot of women, mm. you know, thinking about art is only ever about the full on creativity. Well, there is a really fundamental practicality basis to it too. Yeah, so there are, <laughs> we have work and our working life, we have work and then we have family and then we have our creativity. 
a lot of us, and if you're fortunate enough to be able to have the time to spend it all on your art practice, that has to be a joy and a, and, and it's a yeah, right. massive commitment. And you see the women artists who have done that. But for the likes of me, I had to, um, you had to have a job. I wanted a job, and I wanted a job in art teaching because it satisfied all the all the things that I love about yeah. art, the searching and the doing and, and um, engaging with younger artists. And then you could kind of have your inside hustle yeah. of your actual yeah. creation. And I've exhibited all that length of time from the time I first oh, started really? teaching. So teaching. I've, I've actually managed to maintain a, uh, an exhibition yeah. profile. I mean, that must be so inspiring for a student too. One of your students seeing your studio or seeing exhibitions of yours being displayed, that must be really inspiring for them too. It must really make them go, wow, like she's made a whole lot of this. I can do that, you know? <laughs> that would make but, me do that. Well, it has, and I've gone off on many, many different tangents. And it's so lovely that cinematographers, it's people that are, yeah. are running the, um, you know, the tourism of uh, Noosa. We've got jewellers, hand, handbag makers to royalty. There's people who... It's, it's just amazing, hey? Amazing. And it doesn't even have to be as grand as that. Yeah. It just all I ever ask of students is, promise me you will take your kids into an art gallery. Now, tell me about this beautiful painting. Okay. So, was this, was this one of the first ones you started with for the exhibition? Oh, I and mean, this is one of the problem solving. We were in on the other ones, but I wanted a large statement piece. So I went through all the drawers, you know, my planches, and took out all of the drawings. And I had this one, which hadn't ever really had an airing, but I love uh, lilies in, once they start flowering in July. And I often do little drawings or little parts of etchings that happen in the house. And I like the um, smelly Asian ones that mm. <laughs> leave the saffron everywhere. That yeah, you all on the bench. That's it. Uh, but so it was like this, and it was quite odd because it's about the studio space in the dark. I love oh, okay. working in the dark. And I've got no idea what this is. No, it was. I think it was maybe a work that was on the wall. But it was a smudgy oh, right. white okay. bit that was there that the light had caught something. Yeah. And I went, oh. Alice, there's a rabbit. I've got a hair in my head that I, you oh. know, a little hair that I use in my etching. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. And then I thought about the people who had put Alice as a main feature of their work, and Charles Blackman came to mind. Yeah. He's one of many, but I loved what he did with his Alice. So I, it's flowers for Charles Blackman's Alice. Ah, okay. And this then kind of launched you into what we'll talk about yeah. the rest of them. Yeah. yeah, I thought I've got a statement piece. It really has nothing to do with the other work, but it's about this time. And, it, and that's the beauty of work that you have. You can make it, you can reinvent it Yeah. Uh, in your studio. So that it, and I didn't touch anything else other than that, that little rabbit in there. So yeah. the rabbit literally was just a mark on a wall. Yeah, really. Yeah. And then you, you yeah. then from there went, yeah. ah, that's it. Yeah. It's all come together. So tell me um, about how you came about, even with the idea to do silhouette work with this exhibition. Right. Well, yeah. Touched on the fact that I was short of time. Yeah. One of time my skills. <laughs> We're all time for. Oh, one of my skills is cutting stencils because I've always right. done screen printing. Yes. Um, so I've always been both. interested in textiles. I taught textiles and you yeah. know, the printed textile things. So, uh, and I just loved it, and it comes easily. Wow, it's not, does it? Not a problem, and I still do a cut paper stencil. Oh, and I so love cool. laying it, and it's, it's again, it's a very old process. It's like the resist with the drawing, but it works. Yeah. So if it works, and it's <laughs> really, it makes the mind wander. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we were just saying, I think people will look at these pieces and be able to interpret lots of bits. In there, in their own way, obviously, like you were just saying, there's a piece in here with cards. But when I first looked at it, I first saw wildlife. That was the first thing that popped into my head. But I think that's the beauty of these pieces. People will do that in their own way. Mm. Mm. Take those beautiful messages mm. and those beautiful pieces away. But so you were telling me you start with the quote. I start with the quote. Yep. Um, I always knew I was going to do a long, narrow format because that's been the format of my paintings. 
Um, some etchings for a long time. I like that long narrow view. Oh, okay. Uh, I like it because it compacts the imagery. Right. And it also, um, it's like wearing a, a hat with a brim. And I think Lloyd Rees <laughs> used to say it gives the, him the horizon line. So it sort of makes me huh. think. And I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not making any other questions of, of myself. You know, how, how I'm using it. So, that so your, that has always been a format consistent with your work? Yes. Huh. Oh, that's really cool. So I looked um, and I discovered this beautiful paper, which I thought was uh, Japanese paper, because I have a passion for Japan. But it's Indian, and it's very, very heavy duty and glorious. And, um, it's very satin, it's got a nice wow. satin feel. It is, it? It, it's ivory, mm. like that, and they change subtly from one to the other. Oh, but, okay. But here I find a quote because it asks the question: If I only, only, if only I knew which way to change them, you know, <laughs> that's a question we'd ask as a parent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I do <laughs> so, it daily. Yeah. How How are we going to get this through? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so we've got we've got the queen, and we all know the queen in this fairy story is she's pretty wicked. She's terribly cruel. Mm. Uh, the, the baby there is um, not a baby, it's a pupa. Well, it might be a baby, but then it turns into a pupa and then the cat and then the cat in the story. Yeah. But the baby also turns into a pig and goes off into the forest. So there's little elements of all of um, the, the story in there. Can you describe to me how the silhouette for you began as a child or at that young age where you first discovered silhouettes was going to be something that worked for you with art? It, it wasn't a deliberate thought when I was sick. There were a couple of sessions in my life and they were somewhere in isolation and I, I was at home. So in your room? In, in my room. Yeah. And all that was in the room was in one corner were some little china um, trinkety things. But above the door was a ventilation of the old Queensland with the cutout yep. part. It was always decorative. So I would watch it and look at the negative space. The part that was cut out mm. told the story. The part that's cut out tells the story. Yeah. Yeah. And so it easily gave me what I could see as positive me. Yeah. No trouble at all. Yeah. Yeah. So that light and dark and play on that light and dark. Yeah. And I think that's what draws me the most to silhouette work. Mm. I love the contrast with the light mm. and the dark, um, the play on that, the interpretation of that. Um, yeah. I've always been drawn to that in art, monochrome, anything in art. Mm. It's always kind of reached me somehow. So this is the, the first piece that you do mm. with this exhibition. Mm. So tell me about that. So what comes to mind for you when you when you start doing this first piece? And why, like, why the quote? Again, is it the same process, the quote first and then the interpretation mm. from there? Yeah. It's that universal. Um, question when we go past a place, oh, I wonder who lives there. Oh, yeah. Who lives there? Yeah, I mean, Merrimar is the best place for that. Isn't point. it? Yeah. It's perfect. I wonder who lives there. So it, it's setting up that question that's historical yeah. or factual or a non event because nobody knows. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to say more about Alice for me because there are so many questions. Yeah. There's no answers in Alice. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It is. It's all question based. <laughs> all question based. Yeah. And, and in it, the characters are terribly improbable, but still have characteristics that you know we recognise. Yes, yeah. relate to. Yeah. I love how you've still engraved your name in there as well. I love <laughs> yeah. it. Every piece. It's, it's really. Yeah. I'm a kid. It's very. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just get put the signature in my place here. <laughs> just leave this wall for me. Jenny with you. I love it. So I love this first quote and I think we've just kind of brushed on it, but it is very applicable. Hmm. Again, this for me just goes straight into another book. Hmm. I shall sit here and wait for you to eat your dinner. I shall yes. sit here and wait for you to get ready for school. This is yes. a daily quote for me. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. And I just loved it. I, I could totally identify with it. It's, you know, my daughter was always doing her hair as I was trying to get hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is it. This is what happens we make a stand <laughs> whether it, whether it's um, uh, you, you never follow through with it yeah exactly and that's the thing I beat myself up over <laughs> but you know it's actually been a really good learning curve for me 
um, because my boys have very, very different personalities. My youngest boy is a bit more of a daydreamer like, mm. like me. So hurrying him up with certain things doesn't actually work. No. His brain works really differently no. with that kind of thing. Mm. So this quote for me makes me laugh when I think about my youngest son. Mm. He, he's a little redhead and he just does the world differently. Mm. Jenny, it's been lovely meeting you. Before we go, can you just run me through your outfit? Because I'm a fashion stylist and <laughs> fashion and art for me just marries together. So tell me, I know you told me you ordered this online, which I think is very groovy for you to do, but is it the print that first intrigued you? Yes. So the print's I, the first thing that got you in? And then I you were love like, it. I, I have a passion for oriental design. Yeah, me too. I, 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 I just, when I go to Japan, um, it's more Jap than Japan, yeah. and I think this is probably more Chinese yeah. than anything else. And it's um, it's just really I love it. It's really comfy and it's all those sort of things. I love it. It's, all it's, <laughs> it's been so lovely chatting. I love the exhibition. I think it's a really um, it's a really great exhibition for everyone of all ages. I really think my generation did this kind of exhibition. It mm -hmm. um, it'll appeal to them, especially if they're a lover of the story. And I think it's interactive and it's a great place to bring the children as well. It is. And we show them and give them their experience. So. Well, I wouldn't have done it without the one that we had. Yeah. I really wouldn't. I mean, it just, I thought we are supposed to have to do that. But then she challenged herself. She came up with this magnificent piece. Yeah. It, it's all around us. And I, I'm just thrilled that somehow or other uh, I got my act together. <laughs> Produce. You got your time processing I skills did. down pat. I did. <laughs>